So I want to complain about Ayn Rand's attitude to sexual consent. It is really problematic. Most of the attention has been on the scene in the Fountainhead with Howard and Dominique having sex for the first time. Partly because later in the book, Dominique refers to it as a rape. And I think some people just hear her say that and then assume that it was a rape. And I don't think it is Dominique's opinion, the character's opinion, at the time she says that it was a rape. So I disagree with that particular argument. She is speaking to Gail Wynan. She's trying to throw something in his face. She often exaggerates things or speaks ironically. She is not always a literal, logical speaker for various reasons. And there's nothing in the plot of the book in any way that would give you the impression that in Dominique Franken's personal opinion, it was a rape. Other than that sentence, but I don't think that's the correct reading of that sentence. However, the scene is very problematic. I'll come back to it. But first, there's a different scene that I don't know if I've ever heard someone complain about. But it is the first time between Dagny Taggart and Francisco D'Anconia. When Dagny, in her mind, says to herself that she's afraid. And what she's afraid of is that Francisco will ask permission. She says, without speaking out loud, just crying it in her mind to herself, quote, don't ask me for it. Oh, don't ask me. Do it. The same paragraph says what she wanted most was to submit and that he would do what he wished. The decision was his. There was nothing possible for her except what she wanted most to submit. And that she did not have a good conscious understanding of what was going on or what she wanted or whatever. It says something about no conscious realization. So that's all bad. The reason that this scene is not as bad as the one in Fountainhead, in my opinion, is that Dagny and Francisco were friends for multiple years. They've had multiple years of flirting and sexual tension in the past. Francisco has a reasonable understanding of what Dagny wants. Maybe. It is plausible that he does. He might. Like, a lot of it happened off camera. The flashbacks don't give you every detail you would know to be sure that he knew what he was doing or it was okay. But... Given the plot of the story, it is reasonable to think that he might have known what he was doing and it was okay. There might have been enough communication and understanding. There might not have been, though. It could go either way. But in The Fountainhead, there is no way that there was enough communication. They've had three scenes before where they spoke to each other. There just hasn't been enough flirting and background understanding of each other. There hasn't been enough getting to know each other for work to know what Dominique wants. It is completely unreasonable to think that he could understand her well enough to be confident enough to proceed with sex without asking for consent or anything. And it's a lot worse than that because she physically fights back, which is a big red flag that indicates that maybe she's confused or something is wrong. And that is the kind of thing people should talk about. They should discuss it. Whereas with Dagny and Francisco, at least they got to know each other for multiple years. And they have communicated a lot in the past with each other. So there is some possibility that they are actually on the same page here. But on the other hand, maybe they've never discussed sex before. And it was a big risk and they could have not been on the same page. We don't really know specifically. We don't know specifically how much they flirted in the past. And worked their way up to this and hinted at it. Or if it just came out of the blue abruptly. Atlas Shrug does not specify that as far as I can remember. But in the Fountainhead, we know for sure that Rourke and Dominique have barely spoken to each other. And it, the book gives the impression that at first sight, from a distance, they're into each other. And they both know it. And they have some like very subtle flirting where they do things to look at each other or look away and somehow they're just supposed to communicate what they're thinking to each other and they both know what's going on. But in real life, people have misunderstandings all the time when using their clearest English. So when you just go by gestures and facial expressions and stuff, it is very easy to get it wrong. 
Oh, the other thing that's different between the scenes is Dagny doesn't fight back. She just lies there. It says, quote, she lay still as the motionless, then quivering object. So at first she is still in motionless. And Francisco keeps going. And they haven't discussed it, which is not the greatest, but it's not nearly as bad as fighting back and pushing him away and stuff. I do think that if Dominique changed her voice tone and said, no, stop, I don't consent, I don't want this, get off me, that Rourke would have stopped. But a lot of guys tell themselves they would have stopped in that kind of situation, but they might not have. People lie to themselves all the time or don't know what they're like or what they're capable of or what they would do in what situation. One of the things that happens is the guy is pressuring and the girl gives up and thinks that he's unwilling to stop. When he thinks he's willing to stop, he's just pushing harder because girls are like scared of sex or something. So you just have to keep bugging them and pressuring them more. So they give in because they're like, the taboo is bothering them. So you just have to help them get over it by pushing them really hard, which is a terrible attitude. But people think that way. One of the problems in our culture is that many women do not want the responsibility of agreeing to sex. They don't want to say yes because then sex is in some way their fault, their responsibility, and they are a bit ashamed about sex or something. So they'd rather not give explicit consent so that they don't have to know that they wanted it and that they chose it. There are various things that, that cause line blurring and stuff, but Rand's scenes about this stuff make it worse and give bad advice instead of helping deal with the many problems our society has with this stuff. Instead of saying, hey guys, be more careful, she was like, fantasies where the girl submits or is borderline raped are really sexy and important and worth putting in your philosophical novels. That is what Rand told us. One defense people might try is that Dominique didn't say no out loud, that she didn't give certain types of stop signals. But she did give other ones that, under any normal reasonable interpretation, should seem like at least a maybe stop, at which point you better check. The signals she gave being like actually trying to fight him off. But if you just look at the verbal stuff, she didn't say no. I think it mentions that in the book that she didn't say no or didn't call out to the maid or whatever. I forget if her maid or servant or whatever it was even home or not. But she didn't call out to try to have someone come. Anyways, so you might say she didn't say no, therefore it must have been okay. She could have stopped it if she wanted it to. And I do not think that is correct. I do not agree with that. People are not always able to communicate what they want. And that doesn't make it okay to stick your dick in them. And a lot of times they do communicate, but it doesn't match your standards or your expectations. Like it, what they say means something different to them and to you. They think they said stop, but you didn't hear stop. There are various reasons this can happen. Like one is that the girl is a polite person. She's been raised to be polite. She spent her whole life being polite to everyone all the time. And so she beats around the bush a lot and saying the word no, she says, oh, I don't really like this or something. And she thinks that is a very strong signal that is a no that's stronger than what she usually says. So you should really know she's saying stop, but she doesn't actually say stop because she's not that kind of blood person. So that is one of the things that happens and you might victim blame and say, she should learn to communicate better, but it's a common thing in our society and guys should be aware that is a thing that can happen and be careful about it. The, there is responsibility on them too. And then other things happen, like the girl says stop and the guy's like, if you really mean stop, say stop five times in a row, because sometimes girls say no when they mean yes. Unless you say stop five times in a row, I'm not going to count it as a no. And the girl says stop like four times in a row and then gives up and then, because the guy wasn't actually explicit and didn't say the number. Stuff like that happens where the guy's being completely unreasonable about how he wants to communicate. Those are just specific examples, but 
there are lots and lots of ways that people misunderstand each other and miscommunicate. And so in that context, you should keep it simple and clear instead of trying to read each other's minds. Instead of saying, well, she never said the magic password to stop things, you should look, are there any negative warning signs, any red flags, and then be careful. Rourke did not do that. Rand doesn't like that idea. She wants people to be able to understand each other with less communication than it really takes. She wants them to be more psychic than people actually can be. And she takes that idea and she applies it where it is most dangerous to sex. That's one of the worst places you could apply it. Maybe there are worse ones like military commanders giving orders or something. And if they were trying to read each other's minds, that's probably worse. But it's one of the worst places you could apply it. This lack of explicit communication is to sex. And it is a common place people apply it. Like it's not just Rand, but it is a particularly bad place to try to get rid of clear communication and read each other's minds. And that is where Rand emphasizes it. Like she brings it up more for sex stuff than for other stuff. It comes up a little bit in other contexts, but not as much. It's not as big a deal in the other contexts because of her opinion that basically asking for consent would ruin it. She wants the man to make the decision. But without the woman saying, we can have sex or not your decision. She doesn't want the woman to give the man that power, authority, permission, whatever. She just wants the man to take it and be strong and know that it's cool. And when men try to do that in the real world, where you cannot read each other's minds, then women end up raped. Sexual assaults happen. If you take the rough plot between Rourke and Dominique, and then you run 10,000 variations on it with regular people, and you just do a bunch of similar stories, some of those women are going to be filing police reports the next day. Maybe a lot of them. And some of the ones who don't file police reports will be holding a grudge and feeling raped and will certainly never date or marry the guy later. As happens in the book. There are a lot of reasons that even if a woman was raped, she might not want to file a police report. So the fact that she doesn't does not mean it was okay. People are bad at communicating and discussing things and consenting to things just in general. Take sex out of it and people screw this kind of thing up a lot. They have trouble expressing what they want, rejecting things they don't want, saying no to things they don't want, avoiding any outcomes they don't like. And it's partly because they have internal conflicts. It's not just the difficulty of dealing with other people who might be pushy. It's also their own conflicts inside themselves. And then when those interact with other people, they put a different person being a little bit pushy or rude or all kinds of things can make it worse. Having a misunderstanding with another person can make it worse and exacerbate the ongoing internal conflict problems they're already having. And so people hurt each other in small ways all the time. That's just part of life today. People aren't that careful. They're not that good at thinking. They're not that good at communicating. Things go wrong a lot. And I've suggested, hey, if you want to be a nice person, you better learn philosophy so you can do better at these things. Otherwise, you're going to accidentally mistreat people on a regular basis because that's what people in our society are like. That has not seemed to motivate people for whatever reason. And I don't want them to be motivated by feeling like really pressured, like I don't want to be a bad person and hurt someone. Like you have to actually be interested in reason and critical thinking and stuff. Anyway, in the context that people are bad at interacting with other people without getting hurt in at least mild ways. But you should be really careful about really sensitive issues, including highly personal information, which people sometimes share with each other and then it gets gossiped about and people get hurt. Like you should be careful of that stuff and including sex. 
financial info is another one. People sometimes talk about money, share information about their income or investments or something, or someone loans someone money. And those are unusually sensitive topics where people can get hurt, where not getting paid back can be a really big deal and be really upsetting and stuff. By the way, in general, do not loan money to friends or anyone at all unless you are okay not being paid back. People do not reliably pay back loans and you can easily lose a friendship or become alienated from a family member because you loan them money and then they don't pay you back. And then you're mad and think they were super awful. And also you miss the money. And so the best way to avoid that happening is don't loan them money in the first place. Unless you're actually just going to be like, oh, whatever, if they don't pay it back and be like, I would have given you the money. So it's not that big a deal. If that's your attitude, it's fine. Although you still might be disappointed. Like you can gift money to people and then they can be way worse at life than you wanted, waste their money, do all kinds of dumb stuff. And you can be like, oh, well, I was trying to help you. And then you were just wasteful and be upset. So it is also problematic to help people when you're expecting them to do a good job with it or use the money how you would have or in ways you approve of or whatever. If you give it to them, now it is theirs and they're going to do whatever they do. And if they needed that loan, that is a hint that maybe they're not great with money or something. Anyway, getting back on topic. What Rourke did was not okay. The fact that Dominique actually wanted it does not make it okay because Rourke could not have known that. He thought he did, and Ayn Rand seemed to think he did. But as a matter of fact, he did not have enough information to believe he had consent. So that is really bad. You could call it rape. If you call it rape, a lot of people will object because they think of rape as like pointing a gun at someone using like overt violence. Work did use violence, but it was part of their role play or whatever. So maybe a different example instead of pointing a gun at someone would be drugging their drink and then having sex with them while they're unconscious. He didn't do that. So you can draw a distinction that there's the rapes where the guy would not stop even if the girl said stop really clearly and loudly and whatever. And then there's the ones where he would stop and be horrified and say, oh my God, I didn't know that you didn't consent. Also, the girl could say, I changed my mind. So even if the guy was right, she could at any point say, I changed my mind, stop now. And then the guy should stop. And some guys would and some wouldn't. And a lot more wouldn't than you might like to believe. And they'd have some sort of excuse and not think of themselves as a rapist, most of them. Anyways, there is a distinction between the ones who just definitely don't care about consent and use violence or drugs or something like that. And the ones where it's more, there was a misunderstanding and he was trying to read her mind and guess what he want, what she wanted. And both of them were bad at talking and she wasn't fully sure whether she wanted it or not, had some mixed feelings and it, that made it even harder for her to say anything. And, and it was bad, but. But people are bad at things and it happens. Anyways, you could call the sec that second case sexual assault or rape, and that would be reasonable. Just I call it lying when people are lying to themselves and not consciously intentionally lying to you. There, there are the people who they know they're lying. Like they say the check is in the mail and they know damn well it's not in the mail and they're lying to you on purpose. But there's that type of lie number one comparable to rape number one. And then there's lie number two where they lie to themselves and they fool themselves and they rationalize it and confuse themselves and it's still not okay and i call it lying in general but it's not the same as saying the check is in the mail when you're quite sure it's not there's two types of rape as well as two types of lying it's similar there's the really bad one and then the one where people are bad at things and screw up and stuff but it's not like fully consciously intentional evil Anyway, what Rourke did realistically is the second one. He did not have enough information to be confident that she consented. And he went ahead anyway, so that is really not okay. 
but in his own mind, he wasn't doing something bad. He wasn't trying to hurt her. He wasn't in his mind saying that her consent doesn't matter. So it's not like a conscious malicious evil. And most bad sexual experiences are not the conscious malicious evil type where the guy just found some woman on the street and dragged her into his van or whatever. And our society's a bit confused about that. Like, I haven't looked into this in detail, but I don't think our legal system does a good job of differentiating those two types of rape. There's a whole spectrum of how bad the miscommunication was and how guilty the man was. Because sometimes women say yes, but they mean no. And there were hints. And maybe he ignored some hints. And the hints could have varying degrees of clarity. Sometimes they say yes when they mean no because they felt some degree of pressure. And was it just a very tiny little bit of pressure? Then she just made up the rest? Or what were was he like a little bit more scary and that hinted that he might react badly if she said no? And there's a whole spectrum of how much he could hint that things will go badly for her if she says no. And then there's other things that aren't threats. They're just various types of pressure. Like he could call her frigid if she says no. He could threaten the relationship and be like, oh, you don't want the relationship when she doesn't want sex. And he could conflate the relationship with sex so she feels pressured. But if she does want the relationship, then she has to have sex. And that is a different thing than threatening someone. And it is problematic. And if you call that rape, a lot of people are going to not understand at all and object and stuff, but it is related to rape because it is one of the ways that sex happens when the woman doesn't want it to happen. And if you start thinking that way, sex happens when the man doesn't want it to happen fairly often for various reasons. And some of that is pressure from society. It's not always from the partner. A society pressures men to perform sexually if they're in a, in a long-term relationship or a marriage or just having some sort of flight. And so men feel like they have to do it sometimes and do it when they don't want to. And sometimes the woman had some degree of hint that was going on. Sometimes the man said some negative things about it that kind of indicated he didn't want that. And the woman laughed it off and mocked him and didn't take it seriously. And then he gave up because he didn't want to more strongly indicate his disinterest in sex because then you'd feel bad and unmanly or whatever. And so that kind of thing happens to men too, even when they're stronger than the woman and could push her away, but they don't, but that doesn't mean that they wanted it or it was okay. In fact, there are times when both people don't want it and they still do it and they both have a bad time. And so the way people think about rape doesn't account for that very well. They do not have a good enough mental model to understand those kinds of nuances. It's, I, it's more nuanced than lying and people really have a lot of trouble with the lying thing where you can lie to yourself and that confuses people. And anyways, if you can lie to yourself, then you can lie to yourself about whether you wanted sex and that can really confuse whether there's consent or not. So Rand handles all of this poorly. She does not do anything to make this stuff better or explain it or go into the nuances. She just presents some stuff that's on the bad end of our culture that is below average. And that's not what she does with almost everything. In almost all cases, she is average or better. Like she looks at different opinions that people have. And if she doesn't have something too original to say, she picks one of the better ones that other people came up with. But for this particular thing, and I think you've got to say her views were below average, were problematic. And that she set a bad example. And she did it in her personal life too. She was like 50 or something when she decided to have a sexual relationship with her married 25 year old or something a student. And there have been complaints about that, but if she was a man doing that with a 25 year old female student, maybe she'd be canceled by now. Cause she certainly doesn't have the defenders in the media, like powerful people who are going to excuse it. There's a lot of people who would, who hate her. 
So I think the fact that it happened decades ago wouldn't be good enough to stop the hate if the gender roles were reversed. It's not just an age gap. He was her student because she knew lots more than him. She was much better at thinking and arguing and logic and all that. And she could just win debates with him about everything, even if she was wrong, probably. For example, about whether they should have sex with each other. She was probably wrong about that. And he probably objected. And she probably won the argument, and then he gave in. I don't know the details. I haven't even looked into it as much as possible. There are some books about it. I've read some of it, but I'm not super interested. But anyways, it seems pretty bad and unnecessary. She thought, putting, she thought putting stuff about sex in her books was necessary because she didn't want to leave it out. It's part of life, and she wanted, like, a complete philosophy. But what she put in had major problems.